Part of me is like, is what I'm saying misogynist? We can expect Emma Goldman to be full on feminist, women's suffrage, blah, 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 all of these things, but she's not. Understanding the reasoning be behind why she's not a pro suffrage, even though she's a feminist, even if we disagree with the conclusions, the logic that brings her there is, uh, is uh, an important one to, uh, to, to acknowledge and to learn about. I read this week, Anarchism and Other Essays by, uh, by Emma Goldman. We've looked into Emma Goldman in the past. And uh, she has in that, that collection of essays a, um, something on women's suffrage, which is one of the most, at least to me, interesting um, texts in there. And the reason why it's one of the most interesting is because it's, it's very counterintuitive from a feminist to be anti-women's suffrage, right? So here, what we have is a feminist from um, the 20th century writing her case against women's suffrage. And the case against women's suffrage is not actually to say, as many people who were against uh, women's suffrage used to say, is it's not that women aren't mature enough to, to, to vote or they're too, um, they're too emotional to vote or they're not rational enough to vote. The... What she says, her um, her answer to the fact that um, women's suffrage is not a solution to women's liberation is to say that women's suffrage is not going to do anything. And it's an interesting take that I feel like we might all disagree with, but the reasoning is still um, is still interesting, is still worth going through. She says, look at countries in Europe, I think in Australia, where, where a lot of women have gained the right to vote. Are their conditions better? Are they less house servants? Are they emancipated? Are they equal to their, to their, to their um, men, male counterparts? And the, the answer to that is obviously no. Um, one could argue that it's it's a gradual process. You can't expect women to be to, to get emancipated from just getting the vote, but it's part of the process. And I would agree. I would agree with that with that with that uh, with that take. However, she says a lot of uh, the like women's rights will uh, woman not women's rights women's suffrage will help. Um, they said uncorrupt politics, making politics less corruptible because women are more pure or more uh honest and stuff like that and that is uh, also like a, a misogynistic uh a, a little misogynistic uh argument in favor of of women's suffrage it's very it's a, it's a very interesting um like a conversation and emma goldman says yeah women even if they're they're um they're on par with with men in terms of, of rights to vote and even in terms of, of uh, conditions and rights, they're not liberated because you can't be liberated um, when you still are a subject of capital, when you're still when you still have to sub, uh, subject yourself to an employer. When when the government is um, forces you to be un like the, the, the subject of an employer whether you're the subject of your your husband or of a of a boss who who works in a factory you're not liberated you can only be liberated once capitalism is over and this and this giving you suffrage are working class men liberated are they are they are they emancipated are they free she'll argue that no and giving women suffrage is is not it's going to um, embolden that that kind of system that's being that's keeping uh, men and workers in chains men being uh, a big part of them temer says uh, looking at the polls women tend to skew lefter than men so perhaps they're smarter than men <laughs> yeah there you go the uh, the uh, nail in the coffin for that argument but uh an interesting thing that she talks about um is she says that um women are a lot more religious if i could find here 
We're not reading an anarchist FAQ. Maybe that'll be later. She says that it is safe to say here. Indeed, it is safe to say that religion would have long ceased to be a factor in the lives of the people if it were not for the support it received from women, from women. The most ardent church workers, the most tireless missionaries the world over are women, always sacrificing on the altar of the gods that have chained her spirit and enslaved her body. This sentiment is something I, I, I want to explore. I don't have the stats on if women are more religious. I don't even know if 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 Emma Goldman bases what she's saying on 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 real data. I would doubt it. Um, but from what I got from people who were in churches, from people who were in more religious environments, apparently that's the case. I don't know if anybody can 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 back that up in in chat. If anybody came from a religious background. From what I understand, in more religious families, the uh, the mother would be the one who's more strict about following the the rules and the laws of 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 God or of religion. Helotosis, who is grinning guys, says, uh, "Does women's suffrage play into the hands of the ruling class? Did it proliferate faction among uh, working class uh, working people?" Uh, Federal's paper, paper number ten. I don't feel this way, but the ownership, uh, the owners can pit women versus other groups easy now, easier now. Like, I think Emma Goldman's arg argument is not that women's suffrage is a negative. She's just saying that it's not a positive. If I remember correctly, I read this two or three days ago. The only negative that comes from it is not that it's putting uh, like the working. Class, uh, working class people against each other. It's more that it's emboldening or reinforcing uh, the 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 suffrage system, right? The electoral system that she opposes. Obviously, she's an anarchist, so she's against elections. She's against um, so-called democracy or the idea that you can you can elect a leader who will decide for you what you know what happens. She's against that, and she says if you give the right for women to vote, you're just emboldening that by by giving them more um, more uh, how would you call it uh, legitimacy. You're giving legitimacy to your leaders by adding so many people to like you know to um, to vote for them or to to surrender to their to their power or to their um, authority. Of course, now. I I hope nobody in chat and nobody would ever say, "Hey, listen, women are uh, Emma Goldman was right. Let's take away the the right for women to vote." Because, as I said, like I, I feel like there might be a more negative <laughs> by taking <laughs> the women's right uh, to vote away. And I think what's important here is to see the reasoning and not necessarily the conclusion. <laughs> I think that makes sense, and I hope that it, that it makes sense for people. But to go back to the to religious the the religious thing and and uh, and women as as Emma Goldman puts it, I was thinking um, I don't think this is a hot take, um, but a lot of times maybe you'll say, you'll tell me in chat if it's a hot take, um, but oftentimes this uh, there's a an allure for mysticism from women I, either it be religious and it can happen for men as well. But I see that trend more for for women, and I see it as well for uh, for astrology, and for you know that that kind of um, metaphysical uh, superpower, right? And I think there might be an uh, a sociological case, and it's probably been done before, to say that a lot of this mysticism, um, which a lot of women turn to, comes from uh, an agency that's been uh, stripped from them. Uh, through uh, through uh, socialization, um, men are told to take action. Men are told to take things into their own hands. Um, if they have a family, they have to to be the man of the family. They need to to take care of the family. However, um, women don't have that pressure, right, to lead or to or to 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 to. to take decisions because their 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 family relies on it or their their surrounding relies on it and i feel that because of that um because agency is is less attributed to them 
it's easier to instead of making choices or of trying to it's it's easier to rely or to fall back onto a, a superior power as it's been socialized it's not it's not it's not inherent to to women and I, it's not inherent for men to to you know to be more like assertive i think it's socialized but i think it's very interesting to see parts of be, uh, behaviors that come from that socialized socialization and try to understand it through that way through that lens i might be wrong i want people in chat to like to push back on that um but i do think this whole idea and that's emma goldman just made me think of that because he, she said women are more religious which i don't even think i don't even know if, that, if that's true or not um however for astrology and for other ways of telling the future or that kind of yeah that kind of mysticism at least in my circle i see it coming from mostly women part of me is like is what i'm saying misogynist but at the same time i think it it, it could be important to talk about you know how the way we socialize uh, different genders affect our beliefs i don't think i don't think it's necessarily bad to believe in mysticism especially if you understand that that belief comes from you know uh from external forces that come from your environment and that you don't really you know of course it's not innate Temer says um personal experience my, my mom made certain uh we went to church while my father never cared yeah door talk says where i came from brazil women are, are definitely more religious than men I, I wonder if we can find a um religiosity because it's not about it's more about religiosity than than if they're if they believe or not because you can say you believe but here uh, 83 percent of women say they ident identify with a religion compared to 80 percent of men but that's in terms of believing it doesn't mean it doesn't necessarily mean that they are um pious or that they're they're following that religion right a, a, a better question would be how many people would say that they are uh that they are that religion is important for them because you can say i'm christian but i don't go to church or anything and someone and, and someone else would say i'm christian but i go to church every sunday you'll both say you're christian but both of you follow your faith um very very differently there you go all right all right we i, I found it i found it pew research so here we have it um, they say women are generally more religious than men, particularly among Christians. In the United States, for example, women are more likely than men to say religion is very important in their lives, 60% versus 47%. Um, American women are also more likely than American men to, 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 to say they pray daily, 64 to, uh, versus 47, and attend religious services at least once a week, 40% versus 32%. So there's, there's definitely a gap. There's a definite gap. So it's not just a, a, a feeling thing. We, we have data now to prove it. It was pretty pretty quick to, to, to look, look it up. It was pretty easy. Magna says, Magna says people, uh, people are way too scared of being misogynistic. Really a bad thing to not say something because somebody could say it's very harmful. It's not, okay. It's not, I'm afraid that people will say it's misogynistic. I'm afraid that it's misogynistic, sorry. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm afraid of saying some 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 harmful stuff. I don't think it's harmful to say that women are more religious. And since we find that we saw the data, it's more th thinking how, like trying to analyze that through a, like a sociological sense could be, you know, why are women more religious, right? And you could be very, like you could be very misogynistic and harmful by, by asking that question, not answer, uh, asking that question, but by answering that question in a very, very specific way. You could say, well, why, why are women more religious? You could have the sociological an answer who said, like they say, all right, well, the way women are educated, perhaps they're, there are less educated or socialized, socialized to have agency. So they, they look up to a higher power. They're, they're socialized to be obedient. And therefore they, they're more prone to, to accepting a higher power than men who are shown or who are educated or socialized to be independent, to be strong and um, to be self-sufficient. So if you're self-sufficient or if you're trained to be self-sufficient all your life, 
then you may have feel less the feeling or you may feel the necessity to look for a higher power a bit less, right? Because your whole life you're say, you say you're, you're told to be self-sufficient. You got to rely only on yourself. You can't rely on anyone but yourself. So perhaps the reflex of, of going to, to a higher power might not be as present as a woman would. So maybe it's not how women are socialized, but maybe it's how men are socialized. Or maybe it's a bit of both. But you could still answer that question very mis like misogynistically, saying like, oh, women are illogical or they're irrational and therefore they can't, um, they can't criticize the idea of God. Oh God, we have a pyro anarchist in chat. <laughs> um, there seems to be a large number of studies into the link between astrology and women. Is there? Is there? Um, have you have you uh, looked at looked into them? And do you remember a bit like what the conclusions were? Because I think that link between astrology and women is very in, like interesting to look into. I don't know if there's definitive answers. It must, it's hard to find definitive answers. Timur says, "Is there a religion that isn't about submission or be or being a lamb of God?" The religion of Ayn Rand. Perhaps more men are Randians because of this. I wonder if it, like, if it actually does have a, a a link to submission. Right, you go to church and it's a lot like at least Catholic church because that's 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 uh, the dominant religion where I am, and it's a lot about submitting yourself and and humbling yourself by saying, um, "We are lost sheep. Uh, please guide us to the light." Blah blah blah. All these things, and I feel like. Instinct, instinctively for men, it must be, uh, especially for men of an older generation, like that's a bit weird, right? I am, I'm, I'm less than you. Uh, you are the, you are the great divine. I, I like, I, I submit to your, to you know, to to my creator. I feel like, as a man, that kind of, you know, that kind of um, ideology of submitting yourself to a greater being might have less of a uh, of an appeal yeah exactly yeah like magna I, I completely agree with that the uh, i also think because men are expected to act and solve their own problems and be self-reliable they don't go back to praying and like women who might uh, more often turn to god for help which could sound sound misogynistic yeah that that's that does sound misogynistic but I think you like all you have to say is it's not inherently because like women are just inherently uh, weak or inherently less self-reliable. I think it's just because women are very often socialized and traditionally they have been to be at the mercy of someone else, right? Marriage, the institution of marriage, which is passing down uh, a, a daughter to become a wife is passing down the property of a of a uh, of a father to become the property of a husband. The whole walking down the aisle, you know, you literally have the the father handing over his daughter to to uh, to the husband. That's we don't see it that way anymore. But it's literally a transaction. It's literally passing over property. So. Of course, when <laughs> for centuries, millennia, mil millennias, mil millennias, <laughs> or whatever, when women have al always been a a um, at the mercy of whoever they have to serve, of whoever owns them as property. Um, of course, you are less prone, or you, it's less uh, advocated through socialization to be self reliable. You can't be self-reliable until like the very, very recently women couldn't even work recently. I mean, you know, um, relatively in time, women couldn't even work. So they couldn't even like it was impossible to even ma imagine yourself as being self-reliable. So, of course, you're always going to fall back to, to like some some higher power, whether it be your father, your husband or God. Yeah, well, there's many. Uh, Magna says you might you might also say that because women are becoming more self sufficient because they can go to work and care for themselves with rights with rights, women are becoming less religious than 40 years ago. That is possible. I mean, there are different different reasons why people become less religious uh, since for like 40 years. But however, um, astrology is still very present. We still see the numbers in 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 rates of religiosity between men and women, as we saw as we've seen earlier. 
maybe that will equalize. But I think it, the problem is not only in conditions, right? In the conditions of, of women, but also in uh, their socialization. So even if women have rights, even if they can vote, even if they, it, it, it doesn't take away not only the socialization, but the culture, right? I, and that brings us back to um, to what Emma Goldman was saying in Women's Suffrage. She says, liberation isn't coming from your right to vote or your right to have a job. It's not, It doesn't come from the fact that you become equal to your husband. It's like, it's ingrained in culture. And I believe she says something along those lines in her... There you go. Let's try. Let's read the conclusion. I don't even know if it supports my point. The misfortune of woman is not that she is unable to do the work of a man, but that she is wasting her life force to outdo him with a tradition of centuries, which has left her physically incapable of keeping pace with him. Oh, I know some have succeeded, but at what cost? At what terrific cost? The the import is not the kind of woman of work woman does, but rather the quality of the work she furnishes. She can give suffrage or the ballot no new quality, nor can she receive anything from it that will enhance her own quality. Her development, her freedom, her independence must come from and through herself. First, by asserting herself as a personality and not as a sex commodity. Second, by refusing the right to anyone over her body, by refusing to bear children unless she wants them, by refusing to be a servant to God, the state, society, the husband, the family, etc., by making her life simpler, but deeper and richer. That is, by trying to learn the meaning and substance of life in all its complexities, by freeing herself from the fear of public opinion and public condemnation. Only that, and not the ballot, will set women free, will make her a force hitherto unknown in the world, a force for real love, for peace, for harmony, a force of divine fire, of life-giving, a creator of free men and women. Oh yeah, I, I have to I have to add as well, she was kind of misogynistic in that, in that she wrote this like, beginning of the 20th century so she's like oh yeah women are the ones who who make uh who make uh, our kids go to war and encourage them to go to war and stuff like that it's kind of it's, it has its yikesy moments but and this does sound the conclusion as a um as a women like do your individual actions and like liberate yourself through individual means instead of seeing it as a as a collective or as a social um like a social struggle which it is but anyway emma goldman is really interesting in that in that there's also here the tragedy of women's emancipation there's a whole thing about uh sex work marriage and love is also a feminist text the whole thing about sex work right before this one, I believe. Women's suffrage and the one before is the traffic in women. So yeah, no, it's um, it's an interesting read. Sometimes she's misogynistic, uh, mostly because of her time, because she's obviously a feminist uh, uh, writer. I love reading um, reading up on thinkers who who give an opinion which you would believe is completely different from what you expected, right? Yeah, so like you have an anarchist woman, this very, very radical feminist who who advocated for queer rights in at the beginning of the 20th century. She literally said that, um, she literally advocated in the 1900s, beginning of 1900s, for um, men, women, and people who don't fit in those categories for their rights. Yeah, there you go. All right. Gradations. Sorry. We're reading. We're reading here. Reading Emma Goldman. There you go. It is a tragedy, I feel, that people of a different sexual type are caught in a world which shows so little understanding for homosexuals and is so crassly indifferent to the various gradations and variations of gender and their great significance in life. She wrote this over a century ago. When did when did Emma Goldman die? Maximum in 1940. Maximum. She if she wrote this on her deathbed, she wrote this in 1940. If not, she wrote this before World War II. <laughs> the gradations of of gender, in like before World War II. Ugh, she was such a. She was just a, It was just a trend. 
back in the nineteen the nineteen hundreds, beginning of nineteen hundreds. It was just a trend back then. Nothing to take take seriously. But um But uh, as I was saying, hold on, uh, here. Uh, uh, where's chat? Chat's right here. Okay. Lenora says, I like this new reading layout. I love being on top. Can, can you try it? Try it out. Try it. Try uh, talking again. Try typing in chat now. Do it, you coward. As I was saying, um, we expect from all of what we were, as 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 I've showed, we can expect Emma Goldman to be full on, um, you know, feminist, women's suffrage, blah, 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 all of these things. But she's not. And listening to why she's not a, a or at least understanding the reasoning be behind why she's not a pro-suffrage even though she's a feminist, I feel like is is even if we disagree with the conclusions, the 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 logic that brings her there is um, is a, an important one to, uh, to to acknowledge and to learn about. Very very similar to my next video. Watch me plug my next video on the canvas, which is about um, which is about uh, wage slavery. And I talk about the the whole concept of wage slavery. Um, and I look into a slave owner who opposed uh, what he would accept it to be wage slavery. He saw, um, so this slave owner, this strong advocate for, for slavery was saying, hey, listen, slaves are much better off than free workers in the North because free workers in the North are not taken care of by their masters. They're working 16 hours a, a week, and if they if they become uh, not 16 hours a week, 16 hours a day, and if they don't come to work, well, fuck them. They're not paid, and they can starve. If they're if they're if they're if they're ill, if they become injured, they won't be taken care of. They're ba they're on the street, baby. And he was like, because of that, capitalism is more inhumane than slavery. So we have a, a slave owner who says that capitalism is less humane than slavery. Again, we can disagree with the conclusions, but the logic behind it, even though we can criticize it, is still important or at least uh, interesting to, to, to explore. Godspeed you, Spieve. Godspeed is right. Uh, Godspeed says, when I read it, it seemed a lot more like a, a critique of contemporary suffrages uh, who thought that having women... Uh, women vote would magically solve all the issues with the language and rhetoric to, used to uh, used designed to critique that attitude that uh, that that is all that was necessary yeah 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 it sounds more like um like uh, the the whole idea that that she she criticizes a lot like the purifying uh politics through women's votes she criticizes that she criticizes the whole idea that it will contribute to women's emancipation and she's right like she 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 points to like australian she's like they have women's uh, like women can vote but are they more free are they are they better off and she's like yeah maybe, maybe not she's not she's not criticizing necessarily like women's suffrage except for as i said i believe if i remember correctly the whole idea that it contributes or reinforces the institution but aside from that she's not like yeah as you said maybe i would need to reread it as well but Nonetheless, a very, very, very interesting essay that even someone who's not an anarchist might look into and still find interesting. Um, I remember I used to work in a bookstore and I recommended uh, anarchism in other essays and just for that essay. And I said, I said to a guy who's like, I don't really know where to look. And he's like, he gave me the, okay, he, he, I think he was an anti-feminist, all right? He was an anti-feminist. He's like, yeah, um, I'm very critical of what feminism is, and I'm looking for for a book that that um, you know that would explain feminism because I'm trying to understand it a bit more or better. And I gave him some feminist books which he didn't give a fuck about, so his, his <laughs> he wasn't that open, right? Uh, he's like, 
I think he was looking for a book about feminism, but that is critical of feminism. So what I gave him was Anarchism and Other Essays by, by Emma Goldman. And I told him, yeah, here's a, 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 a woman who called herself feminist, but who was against women's suffrage because she said that it wouldn't change anything for women to, to give, her the, give them the rights to vote. And he was like, oh, that's actually really, really cool. And he took it. Maybe today he's a comrade. Or maybe he, he didn't understand. And now he wants to uh, <laughs> take away the right for women to vote. But like... I think it can it can be a good way to uh, to maybe have normies read up on on anarchist thinkers just because it's such a, a unconventional narrative I would I would say yeah uh, yeah Lenore it is a it is very similar to the liberal idea that if we vote hard enough we won't need to do anything else it's good to critique such ideas yeah I I feel personally I don't know about America or about wherever you are in the world chatter. But here, if you say, yeah, voting doesn't change much, a lot of people will agree. Even the libs, even the liberals. I think this, this, um, this idea that, you know, giving women suffrage is not going to change much. I'd like to see if it did change something. Because I'm sure it did in, 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 some, in some ways, perhaps in some countries, in some experiments. I feel like because they're, they're a massive voting block some some parties did need to include their interests in their in their on their platform i can't believe that it didn't make any difference right anyway i, th- I, th- I think in a, in either case it, it sparks some pretty interesting ideas some pretty dis- interesting conversations and i think it's uh it's uh worth it to read it just for that <laughs>